Sarvebhya Namaskaraha. A very warm welcome to you all to yet another Vedic Astrology Masterclass Series of 2023. I am Dr. Archana Murthy. Today's Masterclass will be given by Pandit Sanjay Rath. He will be teaching Arudha Pada and Dasha. Before I introduce Pandit Sanjay Rath, a quick note to our viewers. Please post your questions in the live chat or comment section. This, the teacher will address each question at the end of the session. Now, you know, Pandit Sanjay Rath is a well-known personality in the astro astrology circles. But for the benefit of those who want to know more, I would like to say a few words about Sri Sanjay Rath. Jyotisha Guru Pandit Sanjay Rath belongs to a traditional family of astrologers from Bira Balabhadra Purushasan village of Puri in Orissa. Their lineage traces back to Sri Achyutadas. His grandfather, the late Pandit Jagannath Rath, was the Jyotish Ratna of Odisha and authored many books on Jyotish Shastra. Pandit Rath teaches Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra, Jaimini Upadesha Sutras, and the Shiva Mahapurana. He has many students around the world. He has been teaching in the Faculty De Development Program for Government of India. This program aims to educate professors and lecturers across universities in India about traditional knowledge. He is an author of several renowned Jyotisha books such as Crux of Vedic Astrology, Vedic Remedies and Astrology, Jaimini Maharishi's Upadesha Sutras, Narayana Dasha, Brihat Nakshatra and many more. Panditra teaches, lectures and consults extensively and he has students and clients all over the world. A very warm welcome to you, Pandit Sanjay Ji. Thank you very much, Dr. Archana Murthy. Firstly, it is my good fortune to be introduced by a scholar like you. And uh, I believe you come from a very good family, that is true. And uh, you are also studying and practicing Jyotish. That is something very nice. I've always believed that women in India represent the lineage of Saraswati. We cannot have the Vedas without Saraswati. If the mothers of India do not take up Sanskrit, how do we expect the children of India to be educated? So thank you very much for this. And uh, that's uh, with that, I would like to say that I thank the Dr. Raman's family, especially Niranjan Babu and uh, Raman Suprajarama and others for uh, hosting this annual conference of master classes. I have been participating in them and would like to continue to do so for the years to come. The topic for today is uh, Arudha Padas. You can see my screen and I will start straight away without wasting any more time. <clears throat> The topic is Arudha Pada and the Dasha. There are two factors involved over here. One is the Arudha and the other is the Dasha. Pada, it's also called the Pada Lagna. Arudha Pada is also called the Pada Lagna. We can have Arudhas for each of the houses. And Arudha is an image of a house. It is actually divorced from reality. The reality may be that you think what you are, but how others see you could be very different from what you think about a certain house. How others view a certain house, a certain bhava, and how you view, view the bhava is seen from the arudha. The arudha is the point from which your mind is going to interact with that bhava. Your mind doesn't directly go to a bhava. It actually sees the Arudha and then goes to the Bhava. So we will do a quick Pada calculations and we are going to study Moon and Arudha. Pada Lagna, which is also known as Arudha Pada, that is the Arudha Lagna. If I have the time, I'll go into Arudha Guna and the Kendras particularly. Arudha Badhaka, there is something called Badhak. Now most of you only know Badhak based upon the Lagna. For Chara Lagnas, it is 11th. For Sthira Lagnas, it is 9th. 
and for dual lagnas it is 7000 but we will go to aruda badaka aruda laba and hani also and aruda raksha these are my topics which i wish to cover but these topics are to be studied from the dasha system and particularly using udu dashas because udu dashas are dashas of the mind and unless we are going to study the dashas of the mind our view of the changing arudhas is not really visible to us we need to see how the mind is perceiving things that are changing around us now i have a nice image over there on the side of a little baby cat and how this baby thinks it's a mighty tiger isn't that so true about all children they think they can do anything oh they are mighty they are grown they are strong but in reality you and i know that they are children that they are just imagining these things in their head how do you know that you are not imagining things in your head that the reality could be very different from what you think is good or what you think is bad so let us take a look at the aruda and see how this works out quick pada calculations is from any bhava you have to count as many signs from the bhavesha as it gains from a bhava result is the aruda or the bhava pada here you see for example for aries now you can see the lagna here i am using is aries this is what they call popularly as the north indian chart we call it the shukra chart now when the lagna lord mars let us say is in the second house so we count from lagna to the second we get two houses then we count two from the second one two we get gemini or the third house so the gemini becomes the aruda lagna you can see that that is the normal easy calculation but if the bhavesha is in a bhava kendra then a modification happens over there these modifications are happening because kendras are vishnu sthanam and vishnu sthanas are extremely pure they are supposed to be meant to be holding the purity that is what is connecting us to bhuloka as you know bhuloka is composed of four petals and these petals are in the first house fourth house seventh house and the tenth house these four petals are in the muladhara so because of that the four petals or the four kendras become specially important when we are living in bhuloka so when the lagna lord let us say is in the seventh house then or in the lagna when the lagna lord is in lagna or it is in the seventh house so normally the aruda temporarily would come to lagna but instead of that it will go to the tenth house from there on the other hand if we have the lagna lord in the fourth house or in the 10th house it will go to the fourth house you can see these are the two riders these are the two riders and for those of you who are not aware of these riders and who have been doing aruda without following these riders you can refer to either the maharishi uh, jaimini upadesha sutras or you can refer to brihat parashar or hora shastra in both of them these riders have been very explicitly mentioned so it is very clear the, uh, the aruda calculations are very clear what really happens is although you are born in a certain lagna how people perceive you is really not this lagna what people are seeing is the aruda most people do not see your lagna at all for example how many of you have really seen president clinton one to one you would not have so you do not get to see the cancer lagna really what you are getting to see is the libra aruda most of the pictures most of the news items most of the photographs are all the aruda that is coming to us you really when you see and meet with a person then only you can get to see the lagna like right now i am talking i was talking to dr archana now what i am seeing in dr archana was an image in the screen and based upon that that is the aruda that is available to me 
I saw her dressed very nicely and all that. That, that much of the Arudha is available. I don't know anything much about her. You see, so whatever we know about a person is largely based upon the information that is available out there and information that we have got. And all the information is stored in the Arudha. So even after you die, even after a person dies, the Lagna actually goes away. The Lagna is dead. The body is gone. But the Arudha remains. We still have pictures of Mahatma Gandhi. We still have photographs of so many people. We have photographs of near and dear ones. We have mental images in our heads of our father and our grandfather or maybe great-grandfather. Whoever we have seen, we have met, we have interacted. But these images that are there in our head are not permanent. Like any storage drive, you know. You have seen how the storage drives are becoming old and redundant and the memory in them is getting wiped out or damaged or then we need a new drive. Nowadays we say we need to save things in the cloud. Right. Like that, this memory in our head is also very limited. It's not an unlimited memory. And we keep storing the files and the files when they become very old, the memory starts getting wiped out. So we really don't store too much in our head. Think about how many really remember President Clinton and that big fiasco that had happened about uh, that affair and all that stuff. Because it was a shocking thing, so we remember it. Things that we normally store in the head, whether we like it or not, are those which are associated with Rahu. Rahu causes us to store things, shocking news, shocking information, terrible things. These Rahu and Ketu are nodes of the moon. They are nodes of the mind. And they show extremities which we normally put, you know, beyond this is indecent. Beyond this is wrong. These are the borders of right and wrong. So Rahu and Ketu are representing those borders of right and wrong. And whenever something is happening outside those borders, it causes a terrible shock. So whenever we talk of Arudha, we should not just assume that it's only the happy things that are there. Actually, the mind tends to store a lot of negative information. And this it causes aberrations in the Arudha. So we will go into the Arudha and it is becoming clear to you that benefit planets that are influencing the Aruda give a good image about us. Whereas malefic planets can spoil the Aruda, can spoil the image. That's why you look at whatever may have happened to Bill Clinton, if he stands for election today, today if he stands for election, he will win the election in America. If they allow him to stand for election, he will win. I know it's unbelievable, but that is the Aruda with Jupiter in the Aruda and Moon in the seventh from Aruda. You see, the Aruda is so powerful, it puts a likeness. You start liking the person on the basis of the Aruda. We don't often care, okay, he had an affair, so what? So many people have affairs. We tend to give, we tend to, you know, some people we just forgive. Whereas some people, we do not forgive. We want them to go to jail. We want them to be punished. We, we want them to be beaten. You see, human beings are not fair. We are nearly not fair. We are not giving equal amount of justice to everybody on the basis of karma. So, so this is where God has to step in. That is why we have a concept of God and we have a concept of rebirth. Because the justice that we are looking for, we really do not give that justice on the way it should be given. We tend to forgive good Arudas, we tend to punish bad Arudas. Now, here is a typical example of Aruda. What we are going to do is we are going to study the Aruda and check the dashas and how things work from. Now, what I have done for your easy reckoning, you'll find a colored picture out here. These are houses from the Aruda and what they denote. The Lagna is Aham. 
or the self. Arudha Lagna. This is Arudha Lagna. A-L. Okay. The first house is Aham or the self. The second house is Dhanam or wealth. The third house is Mrityu or death. Death is not in the eighth house. Eighth house is the house of longevity. And it doesn't want you to die. It wants you to stay alive and keep suffering. Eighth house doesn't want to really see you dead unless it is very weak. It is the Roga Bhava. And fourth house is Suhrid, the good things in your heart, what you like. Fifth house is Preeti, what you love. Sixth house is Ripu, your weaknesses and your enemies. Sixth from Arudha is your real enemy. Seventh from Arudha is the Badhaka. Now you see the new definition of Badhaka. The real Badhak in your life is not as much from Lagna as it is from the Arudha. From the Arudha, if a single malefic planet is placed in the seventh house, then that planet becomes the Badhak in your chart. If let us say, even a single planet, it becomes Badhak and you will have to do constant remedy for that planet. Otherwise, it is going to irritate you so much that life will become miserable. Eight house is Rogasthanam and what we call Rina. Very important word which is not mentioned here is Rina. The debts, the real debts. Who do I owe? What do I owe? And these are debts coming from past life because the Aruda is right in your birth chart. Dharma is ninth house. Actually, it is Raksha, your protection. The only protection that you really have is the ninth from the Arudha Lagna. The tenth house is Karman or what work am I expected to do? Something related. We try to figure out, you know, how to do it. Eleventh and twelfth are very important houses. Eleventh house is Aya or your gains, sources of gains, people who are going to help you, things that are good for you. Vyaya is your expenses, things that will cause losses, things that are bound to pull you down, expenses unforeseen, you like or you don't like, good planets out there show good expenses, bad planets show bad expenses, all those things are from the Aruda. I mean, you know, there's a saying, your feet go to where you spend your money. Take, take these people who like to drink beer. Okay, beer or alcohol. Their feet will go to the pub. The feet are going to where you are going to spend the money. So they go to the pub and they buy a glass of beer and they drink the beer. So it is Shani. Shani in the 12th house shows bad expenses. You are putting your money on bad things. Why, why are you doing that? Because the malefic planet is already there. So what I would normally recommend for as a remedy is if you have a bad planet in the 12th from Aruda, you might as well give a donation for that. If you say you have Shani in the 12th house, then, then do some donation for poor Brahmins or feed the beggars or feed some poor people or give some kind of donation. If you have Mars in the 12th, maybe you can make a, if you have money, make a land donation for the temple. Okay. Do something good with those bad guys. Don't do bad with bad guys. That makes them more bad. You see, if you already have a malefic in the 12th from the Aruda and you are putting your money on bad things like, you know, giving money to criminals to do some nasty things, it will come back to haunt you. Because planets in the 12th house and the second house do a Kartari Yoga on the Aruda. They will do a Kartari. Planets in the 12th house from Aruda are your weaknesses. Bill Clinton has Venus debilitated in the 12th from Aruda with Mars. Aspected by Rahu. 
now venus debilitated in the 12th with mars aspected by rahu what is his weakness what is he putting the money in what is he wasting his time and energy on you can guess from this okay so in this manner when you study somebody's chart what this person is doing what he how is he living his life don't see from the lagna see from the aruda the aruda will give you a very clear idea of how this person is living their life okay now here is the aruda of mahatma gandhi now the north indian chart i have already put on top with the aruda lagna in the first house unfortunately with this chart i do not have an option the two vedic charts i consider these two to be vedic because they are static charts the rashis are fixed like true sidereal sidereal charts are fixed charts so we call this the guru chakra and we call this the surya chakra so the guru chakra and surya chakra are in the bottom now from the aruda lagna you can already see a rahu over there and a moon over there and you can clearly see there's a battle between the two now do you know what is the battle between moon and rahu rahu indicates foreign things foreign goods there's nothing wrong with them they are nice who doesn't like to have a nice computer or a nice thing that's fine foreign clothes do you like to wear a three piece suit or do you like to have a, a pocket watch on that you look at gandhi's childhood pictures you will find that gandhi used to wear three piece suits he came from the very very wealthy family his father was the diwan of gujarat porbandar south gujarat and in naturally diwan means the prime minister being the prime minister of such a wealthy state naturally you have a lot of wealth you lived very nicely you had all the foreign goods you had the finest italian suits and so you dressed very well and somewhere deep inside the moon which is the mother or whatever is your mother land mother mother values the not compare that to the clothes the dhoti now if you look at gandhi's pictures when he grew older he never wore those three piece suits he never wore pants and shirts he would only wear the dhoti it's very interesting if you see the transition of gandhi because when he grew up he had all those things he even went to london and he even when he went to south africa he was wearing three piece suits and the fight of moon and rahu was the fight between india and the indian system and the foreign things you know indian goods foreign goods indian life foreign life there was this clash going on on his aruda so gandhi changed the aruda the aruda changed from being a very foreign one to a being a very indian one and and when did that happen it happened sometimes in this mars dasha now the dasha i have used over here is chatura city samadashas in mars dasha this happened you see this is when when he went to south africa and all that stuff started the satyagraha he learned all that you know in spite of everything gandhi was a vegetarian so being a vegetarian automatically will make rahu weak and moon stronger how does that happen how does being vegetarian make rahu weaker rahu likes to eat meat rahu is a meat eater so you want to make rahu strong then eat meat you want to make moon strong become vegetarian because mercury is loved by the moon moon loves mercury moon really doesn't love rahu but he can tolerate him now if you think of the moon the mind it likes vegetarian food because moon likes mercury whereas the moon can tolerate rahu people say that they love non veg food is it no they really don't it's a habit the body is craving it because you made a habit out of it the mind for the mind it is not a very tranquil thing for the because it a lot of the resources have to be used to digest that right anyway the moon rahu battle continues and as he became more vegetarian started vegetarian society in london and all that with that the moon becomes stronger and stronger and stronger 
and then in Jupiter Dasha, he is coming back to India. Now you see Jupiter is in the 10th house. Jupiter is in the 10th house. Now this is the karma. Some very big karma he has to do. So for that he's come, and it is the ninth lord in the 10th house. You see, from the Aruda Lagna, from the Aruda Lagna, if there is a relationship between the ninth house and the 10th house, the ninth house and the 10th house having a relationship, what you are going to do could influence the whole world. Wow. You know, people talk about Dharma Karma Dipati Yoga. What is Dharma Karma Dipati Yoga? It's a combination of the ninth lord and the tenth lord in your Rashi chart. That is from your Lagna. It's your intelligence, how you are working the yogas from the Lagna. Oh, the person is a big donor. He does a lot spiritually and all that stuff. But from the Aruda, it is totally different. From the Aruda, the same combination of the ninth lord going to tenth house. You see that? The ninth Lord has gone to 10th house and the 10th law and, and you can see that and the 10th Lord Mars is also aspecting it. So what is this Jupiter Mars combination from the Aruda? It is a ninth Lord, 10th Lord Yoga. Do you see that? If you are having a ninth Lord, 10th Lord Yoga from the Aruda and it is activated properly, you will become very famous in the world. You will have global fame. You see that? You see that from the Aruda, not from the Lagna, please. So this is one very, very important thing about the Aruda because it's your photographs, your images, what you say, how you say it, all that is going out over there. That's what's important. Now, it was in this Jupiter Dasha that Gandhi started becoming famous. He actually became a figure to reckon with by the British because this Jupiter is in the 10th house and is very, very powerful Jupiter. But you keep in mind, Jupiter is also the sixth Lord. Don't forget that it is also the sixth Lord, which is your enemies, right? Now, it's a very peculiar scenario out here for Cancer, Aruda, because on the one hand, you want the ninth Lord and 10th Lord Raj Yoga to function. You want to become famous. But Jupiter also being the Lord of the sixth house shows you will have to sacrifice something. You have to make a big sacrifice out there to win the final goal. And you see the final goal happened in Sun Dasha. In Sun Dasha, not only the final goal happened, the sun is in third house. It is the second lord, it is in third house. It is the dhana or the wealth and it has gone to Mrityu Bhava. So all his wealth is going away. All his wealth is going away. Gandhi possessed nothing at the time of his death. He had nothing with him. He was a complete fakir, if I can use the word. So, and also he died in Sun Dasha. You see that? Sun is in the third from the Aruda. So in Sun Dasha, he achieved, his greatest achievement came in the Sun Dasha, which was the independence of India. And he also died in the Sun Dasha. So he sacrificed. Now, that was a part of the deal. If you look at it from Lagna, from the Lagna, sun is in MKS. So, you will have to sacrifice yourself. You are the sacrifice. So, you are sacrificing yourself and in the process, India is getting independence. So, that sacrifice has to be done. But a very great sacrifice is also related to Jupiter places. Places that are ruled by Jupiter are Punjab and Bengal. Bengal is ruled by, in, in uh, mundane astrology, Bengal is Pisces and Punjab, the big Punjab, you know, is Sagittarius. So these two had to be partitioned. And 
untold losses were there tremendous losses now whatever good or bad karma that will come out of that will go to the accounts of gandhi gandhi will have to take responsibility for that and this will weigh down on his soul this will weigh on his soul and there is no that is why they say there is no moksha for kings because to be a king means you are making sacrifices to rule and uh, no moksha can be there for such people now remember that aruda is nourished by the moon which is 3 4 5 or mercury which is 9 10 11 because because the thing about aruda if you see is if you see about aruda is the aruda lagna can only be in 3 4 5 or 9 10 11 11 the aruda lagna can only be in these places keep that in mind that means if it is in 3 4 5 it is nourished by the moon it is 9 10 11 11 it is nourished by mercury so these two planets are the nourishers of the aruda lagna and the first chart that i have for you is that of bruce lee the that was learning the principles now let us look at the chart of bruce lee his aruda lagna is with rahu rahu causes a certain amount of fear bhayankara one of the words used for that is bhayankara so certain amount of fear people will be afraid of you people could be scared of you especially rahu you can see is in virgo which is a, it's a perfectionist virgo is a perfectionist so people the arud the image that we have of bruce lee is that he is a perfectionist but what is he a perfectionist in for that i need to look at the 10th house from here which is mercury and all these planets have conjoined in libra so some kind of a martial arts perfectionist yeah and he was absolutely fantastic in the martial arts there is nobody in the planet who can compare to him he was the best but you see this great if you look at this particular chart the ninth lord is venus and the 10th lord is mercury do you see that these two planets excellent these two planets mercury and venus are conjoined over here so i can say that is a 10th lord 9th lord raj yoga you see that this is raj yoga and this raj yoga is going to function in the area of libra or what we call arts entertainment arts and such areas you see that a combination of the ninth lord and the 10th lord is functioning in the field of arts so although he is a martial artist we can't really call that an art which is mangal so this mercury and venus we take out what do we see over here moon and mars so basically what is he doing so mercury and venus is the yoga we take it out and what is it what topic the topic is moon plus mars moon plus mars is rudra yoga and so rudra yoga basically he is like a rudra he is like a rudra like a hanuman like a like a different sort of a hanuman like a different kind of a rudra i mean nobody can fight with him even muhammad ali refused to have a, a match with bruce lee he was scared that you know, everybody is going to get scared of this guy okay so you can see that now this is going to give international fame right mercury venus combination is going to give international fame and just like gandhi's chart just like gandhi's chart we have sun in the third from aruda lagna you see that sun is in the third from aruda lagna now the sun is going to show death now this death now surya can indicate death from a bullet 
the person can die because of a bullet like Gandhi. Gandhi died from a bullet or it can die from headaches or it can come from fire now or it can come from some other source like here he had a terrible headache and he had a terrible fever because of something that he had taken or somebody gave him something and from that fever and that headache he died which is correct which is exactly as is shown by the sun in scorpio secret sign scorpio oh i see so and this sun and rahu are doing pap, some kartari yoga on this four planet combination in the second from Aruda. So it is very interesting, you know, that you see, the way of the dragon was the first movie that he made in Saturn Dasha, Mars Antar Dasha, way of the dragon. Then he made a movie called the fist of fury in 1972, again in Mars Antar Dasha. So the two movies, they were, they were pretty good, but they were not that big a hit. In the 70s, I was young and I remember this movie. And Bruce Lee died on July 20, 1973. Now, he died on July 20, 1973 in Saturn, Dasha, Rahu, Antar, Dasha. You can see that Saturn, Rahu. Rahu is not only aspecting these planets, he's also doing some Papa Kartari. So, who is Rahu and who is Saturn? We need to figure out. When somebody dies, we need to figure out the Dasha, Antar Dasha. And what are these planets? From the Aruda Lagnam, you see, from the Aruda which is here, it is the sixth house. The sixth house is Aquarius, having Mrityupada. And the lord of this are the two planets, Saturn, debilitated, and Rahu over here. So these are enemies. Saturn and Rahu are enemies. So that means his enemies are killing him. And you see this Saturn with Jupiter, wealthy, rich people, some very rich people, <coughs> which is the 8th house. This is 8th house from Aruda. They say that you owe us. You owe us and therefore either you are going to pay or do as we say or we will kill you. There was some controversy on this. You can read about that. So this is something, you know, those things which were talked about. And this is, we don't know how he died really. Even today, everybody is only guessing that he was poisoned. Now, Enter the Dragon was released on 26 July 1973. Is it just a coincidence? He died on July 20 and the super duper hit movie, Enter the Dragon was released six days later on 26 July. In a week, within a week of his death, the movie was released and it became such a super hit. I mean, it was the mega hit of the 70s. It made him famous, made him a permanent star. I mean, everybody, he was a hero. So do you see, again, we observe a very important rule out here aruda dharma karma dipati yoga gives international fame what we call the maharaja it's the maharaja yoga okay we have seen how this is working we have seen how the dashas are also telling us so many things but we need to pick up the correct dasha as you have seen that here I have picked up Dwada Shottari Dasha because his Navamsha Lagna is the sign of Venus. Okay. Now the next chart is our superhero of India, our mega star, our mega success, the man who has single-handedly changed the destiny of this country. And who I think is going to come back with a 360 seats in the coming elections. Okay, now let's go and take a look at his chart. His Aruda is Gemini. Aham. Aham. How strong is his Aham? His Aham is Mercury exalted. His Aham is Mercury exalted. And not only that, if you look at the Aruda, it's difficult to see it in the North Indian chart. If you look at the Aruda, it is clearly in the 9, 10, 11 thing. 
so mercury is the important planet over here and not only that he is the lord of the first and the fourth and fourth is the suhrid heart the heart and you can see he and his heart the heart of the lion you see the heart of the lion there are many politicians but there are very few lions how do you know a lion you see the heart of the lion you see the aruda lagna and the fourth lord is the same mercury and he is exalted and it is with surya isn't that like gandhi okay and it is with ketu that means he is not attached he is not attached he is very very detached so he is a maharaja because the ninth lord and the tenth lord are having an exchange wow so both jupiter and rahu are involved in a dharma karma adipati yoga so what does it tell me that this jupiter in the ninth house shows that the temples and the shrines and dharma remember the word i used for the ninth house this is going to shine and what do i talk about 10th house foreign affairs we will have a totally different image we will be a respected country nobody will call us indian indian you know you know have you seen those cowboy movie pictures all oh, those red indians the red indians were called indians hopefully nobody will call us india indians or indians in the future hopefully we will call bharatiya i mean i'm only hoping that in my lifetime i'm going to see that happen when we will become bharat and we will be called bharatiya and if it can happen it is this man who will make it happen now you understood this now let us look at his dashas now the sixth house is the house of enemy Now we need to learn some rules about Aruda. The rules about Aruda are not the same as the rules from Lagna. In fact, they are very different. The rules from Lagna are called Surya rules. The rules from Aruda are Chandra rules. Again, I repeat, the rules from Lagna, the houses from Lagna, are Surya rules because Surya is the Karaka for Lagna. but the rules for aruda are chandra rules because chandra is the karaka of the aruda so you see the chandra rules are very different from surya rules the sixth house sixth house let us look at sixth house the rules if a natural benefit is weak or debilitated or if a natural malefic is strong and exalted then it gives great raj yoga by defeating enemies firstly you have to find some enemies that itself is a problem for people like some people fathers it's easy you easily find enemies for politicians the enemies come running to you you don't have to worry they will come running to you now look at this this moon and mars are in the Sixth from Aruda Lagna, Moon is debilitated. In the year two thousand ten or eleven, I was in Somnath doing Rudra Bishek over there for the whole night, and it was Mahashivratri with forty students. And suddenly, our main priest Parag Pathak he took a break. because he had to go because some vip was coming i said why would which is this vip okay we quietly sent somebody to check it was narendra modi narendra modi at 11 o'clock in the night the chief minister after finishing all the work he came to do rudra bishek at somnath i mean which chief minister does that i was so happy i said may all our prayers go to this man he deserves to be prime minister and he became the prime minister in 2014 you see why 2014 because you see the moon dasha started somnath you see the power of somnath the moon dasha started and chandra absolutely blessed him a single benefit 
debilitated in the sixth from the Aruda Lagna. And you see, 2012, I made the prediction. I was so sure of it. There is no way you can defeat this man. Not with the moon debilitated in the sixth. The reputation of his opponent will be completely demolished. And then you see what happened. Uh, five years later, I think 2018 or something, I was in the Baba conference in London and people asked me who, who will be the chief minister? Oh, sorry, who will be the prime minister of India? I said, there is no need for who will be. We are wasting money in having... A, ele elections are very expensive. Very, very expensive. India is not so rich, okay? Now it may be wealthy, but that time, no. We are wasting money. Narendra Modi will win hands down. He was, he is the prime minister and he will simply continue. Nothing is going to change. So when you ask who will be prime minister, it means that there is no prime minister or, or there is somebody in waiting. So it's obvious that he is going to be the prime minister. So 10 years finished. When did 10 years finish? 2023 February. And then Mangal Dasha has just started. Now see the second part. Or if a natural malefic. Is Mars a natural malefic? Mangal is a natural malefic. Is strong. Is Mangal strong? Mangal is in Scorpio. He is very strong. Is he exalted? No, he is not exalted. Then it gives great Rajyoga by defeating enemies. So he will continue. As far as I am concerned, he is supposed to be Prime Minister till 2030. He can retire after that if he wants. I don't. I mean, Dharma Karma Pati Yoga will be there, so he will get involved in that. But but as far as I'm concerned, Moon Dasha, Mars Dasha, the one prime minister I think India should have, and if we have got good karmas, he will be the prime minister. Absolute. Did you understand this? Did you understand how this is creating by defeating the enemies? He is absolute Rajyo. So you can see these are the things, the periods. Sun Dasha, Venus Dasha, Saturn, he became chief minister, Venus Saturn. This, he became chief minister not by defeating anybody, but he was picked up. Third house means you are being picked up. Somebody has to, it is a Viparita Raj Yoga. That is somebody, you know, ninth lord in the third house. Somebody old had to step out. Sandasa Mars. Look at this. Mars Antardasha. He became chief minister for the third time. Sandasa Venus Antardasha. Chief minister for... You see, it was very shaky that time. Everybody said that he may be defeated. And all the BJP people had gone to uh, Gujarat. <clears throat> but they could not defeat him. Then... Moon Dasha, Mars Antar Dasha. Do you see this Mars Antar Dasha? He became Prime Minister for the first time. Moon Dasha, Mercury Antar Dasha, 303. I had predicted 300 seats. He got 303. PM3, Moon Dasha, Mars Dasha, Mars Antar Dasha. This is happening in 2024. It has not yet happened. I am expecting 360 seats. Let us see what he will do. So you can see, you can see, what does the person want to do? How is his mind? The Aruda Lagna Lord is with Ketu. He wants to become a Sadhu. See, if Ketu, if Ketu, Ketu is the renunciate. It's, it's somebody who wants to give up on life. Somebody who wants to go away. So if Ketu is conjoining the Lord of the Aruda Lagna, you want to, go away, you want to give up life, you want to run away. Typical. So he ran away, he went straight to Ram Krishna Mission, Calcutta. He wanted to join the order and become a monk. But they sent him back. Thank God they sent him back. Okay, thank God they sent him back. The Maharaj knew. No, no, no. There is bigger karma for you. Please go and do it. The Maharaj knew. And thank God they sent him back. So you can see again in another chart, three charts now, a yoga of the ninth lord and the tenth lord from the Aruda Lagna gives international fame. So you see that till now, till maybe one hour back, you were not sure 
of what combination shows international fame and that level fame the ninth lord and the tenth lord from aruda lagna why because the aruda lagna is a moon it's a lunar dominated lagna it it works on the minds of people you can get into the heads of people like i am he has got into my head you can see that right and i'm talking about him i'm so excited to talk about him like that so many people are so excited to talk about him now it's very interesting how people have to attack him and when they attack him they get demolished and he becomes bigger it's very interesting for nowhere people come and they attack him i do it's funny you know they will keep doing that and they will keep making him famous the next chart i have for you is a very big surprise especially this is a great portion from my land of odisha he is bhayjant panda he is a four time member of parliament rajya sabha in 2000 2006 lok sabha 2009 2014 it was from bjd and on 8 march 2019 he switched and he came to bjp and became the national vice president and uh, right now he is the prabhari of uh, he is in charge basically of assam and delhi he is uh, of course the chairman of the india us forum i mean he started the india us forum he wanted that india and the united states must get closer they have to become close and in the year 2001 he started the indo us parliamentarian forum and has been its chairman for 15 years now or maybe i may not be now i mean he is he is the main guy in the indo us forum which is spearheading india us relationships now you can see that he is difficult in that chart he is aries lagna with uh, with mars exalted in the 10th house so normally the aruda should come to libra but since it's not in the 1 7 it goes to the 4th house so the aruda is in cancer so this is the aruda with cancer in the first house and uh, it is that this chart is what we are seeing but what he is is this he is actually a aries he is a very strong person very kind person very caring person and you can see now some things i want to show you specifically the aruda lagna lord is the moon and it is debilitated you see that that's not good if the aruda lagnesh is debilitated your dearest supporter see you will like cancer aruda lagna shows what you like simple it's what you like who you like if the aruda lagna is in cancer you like cancer lagna and hrid you trust libra lagna simple you like karka lagna and you trust tula lagna these are the two important takeaways from today's lecture so what who do you like you like cancer lagna but because this is debilitated a debilitated planet will ultimately behave like shani it is the hidden shani in your horoscope it is not the real shani it is the hidden shani it is the one that will cause maximum pain maximum suffering maximum debilitation maximum downfall so when is that expected to happen in moon dasha from 2012 to 2024 yes it was during this dasha that he was hounded by a leader who is born in karka lagna and he was hounded by him chased by him attacked by him to the extent that he had he just walked away from the party which he had founded he founded that party with that leader three of them actually founded the party if i remember right it was navin patnaik au singhdev and jay panda three of them founded the party 
I know that. I've seen these things. First-hand experience. And he hounded him. And in, you can see that. That uh, later in Moon Dasha, Jupiter Antar Dasha, he joined BJP. Now, why Jupiter Antar Dasha? Normally from Lagna, what will you say? Jupiter is in the 12th house. You will say it's a bad placement of Jupiter. That is foolish. Don't make that mistake again. You see, you have to, what is happening, what you are experiencing is nothing but Aruda. Lagna is your intelligence, what's working inside your head. But what you are experiencing around you is the Aruda. Do not ignore the Aruda chart again. I have been saying this from the year 1994. In the beginning, I was hounded for talking about Aruda. But now everybody knows this is Parashara's teaching. This is not something that Sanjay has created. I mean, if I created all the things that I'm saying, then you should give me a Nobel Prize. This is all Parashara's teachings, please. They are not mine. So, so protection is always coming from Aruda Bhagya, Aruda Ninth House. Now, you remember the previous chart. Just to remind you, let us go to the previous chart. What is there in the ninth house from Aruda? Do you have Jupiter in the ninth house from Aruda? So if you have Jupiter in the ninth from Aruda, you are going to be a great supporter of Dharma. Jupiter in the ninth house, absolutely truthful. Absolutely truthful. You will fight for the truth. And the funny thing is, they will leave you a typical, typical of, of politics. The guy who is truthful will be called the thief. Because they can't find any other weakness with him. He has also got Jupiter in the ninth from Aruda. But this one is in Pisces. You see that? And in Moon Dasa, Jupiter Antar Dasha, he joined BJP and steered Assam into a stronghold. He was the one who really made Assam what it is. Today, Assam is very strong. Currently, works hard in winning Delhi. Wait for the exalted March Dasha in 2024. You see, do not underestimate this exalted Mars. He is the 10th Lord. Don't forget that. He is exalted in the 7th house. An exalted planet will give Raj Yoga. The malefic Saturn is Badak. This old man. And this is Yama. So Yama or the God of Death is going to visit. And is going to do certain things to help him. So Agni rises strong in Vaishakha Masa. Vaishakha Masa is around April. Around April 2024. The effect of this new Dasha will start. Although technically it is starting in September 24. Actually, its effect you can see, you know, Dasha Chidra. Those of you who know Dasha Chidra will know it will start. When will the effect start? It will start from Vaishakha Masa. And it is then that you will really see what Jai Panda is in the days that are to come. Okay. Do we have more time? Oh, we do. We do. Thank you, we do. I will quickly go through Winston Churchill now because of uh, I will go fast now. I will not be. Now look at the ninth Lord. Once again in this chart of Churchill, the Aruda is here. The ninth Lord is in 10th house. Right. And which is the 10th Lord? Sun. It has Drishti on the ninth house. You see that? Ninth Lord in the 10th. 10th Lord aspecting. Now what aspect is this? This is called Rashi Drishti. In the North Indian chart, it is tough to understand. This is very easy to understand. From the Aruda Lagna, you see that this is 10th house. And the 10th Lord is aspecting this. 9th Lord. So again, we have Aruda Dharma Karmadipati Yoga, International Fame Maharaja. You can go through this. You can go through his dashas. But do you see a lot of planets are in the 12th from the Aruda? 
Twelfth house from Aruda means somebody who can let you down, somebody who can backstab you, somebody who can put you down very badly, somebody who can be doing things which will ultimately end up hurting you. Right? So what is this sign? Libra. Libra, we have two kinds of people coming from Libra. We have both Gandhi and we have Hitler. And is there any, but the thing about him, you can see he has Ketu over there, he has Jupiter over there, he has Mercury over there. So there are three people over here. Can I say that uh, Jupiter would be somebody like Gandhi or Gandhi will be that Ketu. Gandhi is the Jupiter, Ketu will be that Hitler and Mercury will be somebody else. So three people he really, really disliked. He hated Gandhi, he hated Hitler. And he hated the third one, I don't know. And uh, well, Gandhi got the better of him. Hitler defeat, I mean, he defeated Hitler. Those things you can know. That Venus Ketu Parivartana is there. So he ended up defeating Hitler, but not Gandhi. I mean, Gandhi ultimately won. And uh, we got the thing. rest of it you can see from here. This is the chart of Krishna Raja Wadiyar for the most, one of the greatest kings of India. You know, India is very proud because we have had such great people to live up to the ideal of Ram Rajya. You know, it's difficult to understand something like Ram Rajya, that somebody in power. Normally, power corrupts everybody. Somebody comes to power, gets very corrupted. They become bad, they do bad things. But here's a person who has done a lot of good. Now, what I want to highlight over here is the exchange between Lagna Lord and 10th Lord. Now, the Karaka for the Lagna is the Sun and the Karaka for the 10th house is Mercury. So, from the Aruda Lagna, from the Aruda, the Lord has gone to 10th house and the 10th Lord has come here. Do you see? The exchange over here between the Lagna Lord and 10th Lord. It is as if there is an exchange between Sun and Mercury. It is an exchange between Sun and Mercury. What would you call that? Nipuna Yoga. We call that Nipuna Yoga. Very brilliant. Very, very brilliant person. Very skilled. Many accomplishments and was the epitome of virtuous conduct. They called him a Rajarshi, like Janak, the father of Sita Mata. He is popularly called a Rajarshi, a philosopher king. In 1905, in Jupiter Dasha, Jupiter Antar Dasha, the first to electrify a city, Bangalore or Bengaluru, was the first city to get electricity. The whole city had electricity. And this king used the taxes for the benefit of the people. Most of the colleges, most of the top colleges and uh, top learning institutions we find today, uh, Nimans and so many other things were all made by this one great king. And not only that, not only did he do so much good for the people, including electing, finding a city and all that, in, uh, uh, he, did, he, was, he also was the second wealthiest Maharaja and uh, he had a net worth those days of seven billion dollars in today's prices. And he died of a heart attack in Mercury, Dasha, Mercury, Antar Dasha. Why would Mercury kill him? Because you see the 10th Lord, normally I would see death from the 10th house but because of this exchange because there is this exchange of the 1st and the 10th so maybe Instead of seeing from here, I should see from here the third. I don't know. Or would I just say that Mercury is severely afflicted by Sun and Saturn? This is called Pitri Dosha. Sun and Saturn are called Pitri Dosha. Do you agree with that? Okay. Sun Saturn combination is Pitri Dosha, which means Mercury is going to deliver this Pitri Dosha. Your father, when did his father die? Yeah. Rahu Dasha, Mercury Antar Dasha, his father died. And see, Pitri Dosha is delivered by Mercury. 
So Madhrao Dasha Marpuri Antar Dasha, his father died and he became regent king. And then later on in Mercury Dasha, Mercury Antar Dasha, he also died. So the same Pitri Dosha that killed his father also killed him. So you got to understand Dashas. And Dashas tell us exactly what's happening to the Aruda and other things over there. Aruda Badaka. <clears throat> this is a serious matter. So please stay focused. Do we have a single malefic in the seventh from Aruda? Yes, we do. What is it? Ketu. In which Rashi it is? It is in Taurus. So do we call this Badak? Yes. And what is this Badak about? It is a Shukra. Shukra Badak. So when a sh Ketu in Shukra Badak, what do you mean by Ketu in Shukra Badak? It means a headless animal attack. A headless animal attack is going to happen on her. Right. From the Aruda, do we have any MKSs? Moon is in MKS. Do you see this MKS moon? Eighth house. Okay. It is with Saturn. Do we have anything else? No. Okay. So seventh lord, which is the seventh house has got two lords. One is Venus, debilitated. Do you see that Venus debilitated and Afflicted by Sun and Mars. Sun and Mars are punishing. And what is this? Moon. Moon with Saturn is brain sorrow. Terrible sorrow to the brain. Moon with Saturn is terrible sorrow to the brain. So you can see that the Badak is there. Which planet is the Badak? Ketu. If Ketu is the Badak, it is called Sarpa Badha. If Ketu is in Badak, it is called Sarpa Badak. When is Sarpa Badak going to hit? Sarpa Badak will hit on Panchami. Krishna Panchami. That is the day Sarpa Badha attacks. Now, for that, you need to have a lot of knowledge of the Tithis. Okay. Ketu Badak is Sarpa Badak and it will hit on Naga Panchami. A single malefic in Aruda 7 Bhava shall act as a Badaka. I want, you see here, Ketu is debilitated. It's in Taurus. It's a bad Ketu. It's a weak Ketu. Ketu in Taurus is very weak. It is opposite its home. It is very far away from its home. So he is very anxious, angry and a very aggressive one. This is a Brazilian female at the age of 13. She was raped on 30 August 1988 in Venus Dasha, Moon Antar Dasha. What was the Dasha? Venus Dasha. What is Venus? Seventh Lord from Aruda. Debilitated. We saw that. A debilitated planet you should study from Aruda. Whichever house it is lording from Aruda, from that house, Shani will attack you. If you have even one debilitated planet in your chart, check from which house it lords from Aruda. Check the Bhava from Aruda and it is there that the attack will come. Here it is seventh lord. So the attack is a seventh house attack. Moon is the co-lord of Taurus because it is the Mula Trikona. So moon is also Chandrashtama. So moon is in Chandrashtama and Venus is debilitated with Sun and Mars. So you can see Sun, Mars are coming through Venus and Saturn is coming through the moon. And the attack is happening around 9 p.m. It was a Tuesday. Does it coincide? It does. On <coughs> It was Krishna Panchami. It was Krishna Panchami. In, and the Lagna rising at the time of the attack at 9 p.m. <coughs> in Brazil, the Lagna was Pisces Lagna and Mars was in Lagna and Moors Moon was in Aries. By an assailant, the person who attacked her and raped her, he was born on 13th May 1961 on a Saturday with Krishna Chaturdashi Dosha. He was born on Krishna Chaturdashi. 
So people born on Krishna Chaturdashi, don't forget Krishna Chaturdashi was the day, was the night or the Titi on which Chandra kidnapped and raped Tara. This person, a people who are born on Krishna Chaturdashi have the danger of either raping somebody or getting raped by somebody. This is a very bad Tithi. That's why we pray to Lord Shiva to protect us from that evil of Krishna Chaturdashi. It is called the Tithi of the vanishing moon. On that night, the moon will be gradually vanishing. It vanishes from the sky. On Amavasya, it is dark right from the beginning. But on Krishna Chaturdashi, it is there, but it goes vanishing. And this Krishna Chaturdashi in the chart of this person was in Aries. Moon was in Aries. So when somebody is born on Krishna Chaturdashi, if the moon is in Check the Rashi where the moon is. When, whenever the moon shall transit that Rashi, it will not be good for you. Janma transit of the moon. If the moon is negative. So did you understand how the Badak worked? The Badak worked exactly as indicated in the chart. Exactly on the night of Krishna Panchami, Naga Panchami. So this is the night on Shukla Panchami is Shri Panchami. Shukla Panchami is Saraswati Panchami. Where the Rishis and Saraswati are all worshipped. But Krishna Panchami is Naga Panchami. And that is the night you need to worship the Nagas so that you pacify them. Arudha Labahani, I will quickly go through that. All you have to do is to look at the 11th house from Arudha Lagna. And the 12th house from Aruda Lagna. And check. Now this is Aquarius. So which signs are aspecting Aquarius? Libra is aspecting. Cancer is aspecting. Capricorn is aspecting. This one is Pisces. So which are the ones which are aspecting Pisces? Sagittarius is having Rashi Drishti. Virgo is having Rashi Drishti. And are having Rashi Drishti. So all you got to do. All you got to do. It's a very simple thing. Put a tick on the Rashis, three Rashis which are aspecting the 11th and a cross over here. Also put a cross on the 12th and a tick on the 11th. So we have four Rashis and four Rashis with crosses. Now if you find a, which are the main planets? Do you find the sun over here with a cross? The moon with a cross? Now these are the two luminaries in your chart. The luminaries, the sun and the moon. The most important planets in your chart. If the sun is crossed and the moon is crossed, that means in day you have no money. In the night you have no money. If you have no money in the day and you have no money in the night, how will you have money? So you see that the sun and moon both are contributing to your losses. The only planets that are going to give you money is what? Saturn and Venus. So you will just get money for some food because of Venus. Saturn is not going to give. So you see, <clears throat> he's a Dutch. He was a Roman Catholic priest. And on 1st May 1943, you can see that in Rahu Dasha, he was the priest. So he became a priest in Rahu Dasha. See, Rahu, ninth house. So he became a priest, right? What is ninth house? Ninth house is the house of priest, of dharma, of temple, of the church. So in Rahu Dasha, you will become a priest. But what happens when Jupiter Dasha will come? He left the parish work. He assumed the life of a hermit, living in total poverty in the bushes. You see that? He was noted for his homeless existence in May 1976. So all you got to do is to follow this and check wealth and poverty. I have another chart over here, but I don't have the time to do this. Maybe we can do it quickly. Now from the Aruda Lagna, this is Mukesh Bhai Ambani. This is supposed to be the 11th house, but you see the 11th and the 10th are having a Parivartana. 
So I will put Aries as the 11th house because of the Parivartana. And I will put this as the 12th house. Right? And I'll put a cross over here and I'll put a tick over here. So who are the, who are the which are the Rashis aspecting Aries? Because of the Parivartana. If the 11th is having a Parivartana, I have to take the other Rashi. So I took Aries as the... All these planets are giving him money. All these Rashis are giving money. Gemini, so Virgo. So you see, only the moon, only mom, mother. Every planet is giving money in this horoscope. Every planet. I mean, this is crazy. One doesn't see a horoscope where all the planets just want to give him money. And only one planet is telling, no, you have to share. Who is that? That is the moon. So mother. So imagine he has a fight with his brother. And his brother wants to say, no, you have to give me money. He says, I won't. Because technically, no, none of the other planets can take money from him. If nobody can take money from him, if no one can take money from him, it's his wish if I give or I don't give. The only planet which can force him to part with his wealth is the moon. So his mother was the only one who was capable of compelling him to give something to his younger brother, Anil Ambani. And he was right. He was telling no. I will look after him. He can spend the money. He has to spend money. I'll give him enough. But you see what happened? He parted with all that money to Anil Ambani. And Anil became the richest man or second or third richest in the world. And in five years time, he is bankrupt. Whereas he has become more and more and more and more wealthy. And he will continue to become wealthy and wealthy and wealthy. You know why? Because all the planets are giving him money. So I'm not going to sit and see Dashas because the moon Dasha is only going to come in 2031. Right? This moon Dasha is only coming in 2031. Till then, he is just going to make more and more and more and more. Nothing is going to stop him. Now I'm going to go into a Depending upon my time, yes, I do have 10 minutes. It's cutting it too slow, so I'm not going to start this. Now, this is, I'm just going to, you can read this later. It is being copied into the video. So you can pause the video later and read this whole story. It is the story of Ela. Ela to Ela. Ela is the male, Ela is the female. So it's a male-female transition because of the mantra power of Vasishta. Vasishta is the Rishi associated with Saturn. He is the very powerful Kumbhod Bhava Rishi and uh, extremely powerful Rishi. And uh, the guru of Sri Ramachandra. And you see when Vaivasvata Manu and his wife Shraddha wanted to have a child, he did a puja for them. And they had a daughter called Ila. That's a female name, Ila, the long. Huh? And uh, Manu was uh, depressed. He wanted a son. So he went to the Rishi Vasishta. Please do something about this. And the Rishi did his magic. He did a mantra. And Ila became Ila. Ila became Ila and became a male. And so, so that there's no memory of all this, Manu changed the name and called him Sudyumna. And the young prince of Prayaga, Sudhyumna, uh, he entered the forest of Kumaravana near Kailasha. Right. So that's in Cancer. Just to tell you, this Kumaravana is in Kailasha and Kailash is in Cancer. So in Jyotish, we need to see Cancer for this male to female, female to male kind of thing. We are more interested in female, male, male, female sex change. Huh? I am going to check sex change with the Aruda and I have 10 minutes for that. So I will go through charts quickly rather than wasting time. My first chart for you is Jin Zing. Her Aruda, as you can see, is in Gemini. 
And where is the Lord of Gemini? The Lord of Gemini has gone to Cancer. Right? So it has gone into the forest of... You see that problem over here? You see Surya over here, Malefic? I don't... You see, the moment you see um, male planets, male planets are not allowed to go to Cancer. Male planet should not go to cancer because that is the jungle of Parvati. She lives there. And, and, and Lord, she, and there is some kind of a magic charm that has been put over there that if a male planet enters that, he becomes a female. So Surya has gone over there and Surya is the Amatya, okay, Mercury. So you can see that. And anyway, there are two male planets over there. So some kind of a transformation has happened. In 10 years of age, the young boy, this is the boy, Jin Zing, rigorous dance program in year 14, first heard the word homosexual. In 87, he went to the US. He finally went through a sex change in China in 1995. In Mercury Dasha, Mercury Dasha. I want you to note Mercury. Mercury was the one who loved Ela. Mercury was the one, when, when she became a female, Ela, Mercury loved her and had a baby from her also. So, so the, the Aruda Lagna, Aruda is how you perceive yourself, how your mind, how your mind is perceiving yourself. It is not your intelligence. It's not a question of logic. It's a question of what you like. It's a question of things you like. You see, the Aruda Lagna Lord has gone to cancer. Do you see that? The Aruda Lagna Lord has gone to cancer. And, and uh, it is not the moon. It's not the moon. And anybody else like Mercury going out there. I mean, you want to be a female. You see, you visualize yourself as a female. The Aruda Lagna is how your mind, it is your consciousness, your mind is seeing yourself. You are seeing yourself as a female. So naturally, you, you want to go there and Mercury is, uh, you want to go there and you want to become a female. And it gave fame and success and love in the forest of Parvati. You can see that. She has had three spouses. She was a top dancer, ballerina. This is all Mercury, right? Dancing and all is Mercury. So the Aruda is all about Mercury. Everybody knows her as a dancer, as a top dancer. She is famous as a top dancer, as a choreographer, and more so as somebody who had the courage coming from China to go and have that sex change and be what you are. And what and how, how do we know that Mercury is powerful? Look at the number of languages. She can speak English, Korean, Japanese, Italian, and French. That's five languages. Wow. Anyway, I don't have much time, so other things you can see. Romy Hag. Do you see this girl? Oh my God, she's very beautiful. Do you see this? And this is uh, uh, David Bowie. You all know of David Bowie. Now, where is the Aruda Lagna? Here we have one Aruda Lagna in Aquarius and another Aruda Lagna in Virgo. You see that? Because of Ketu, because of Ketu, this Aruda is coming to this, and because of Mars, the other Aruda is coming over here. Now, I don't have the time to go through this, but this Aruda is stronger, Mercury. And uh, Aruda Lagna Lord Mercury is combust. Oh. So she doesn't like her looks. The Aruda Lagna Lord is combust. You are feeling combust. You don't like your looks. You don't like yourself. You don't, you, you want to change things. You want to change. Your consciousness wants to change. The Mercury has to come through. But, but this is not connected with cancer. There doesn't seem to be a connection of Mercury with the sign Cancer. So, so how is this exchange going to happen? Or how are you going to have a sex change operation or whatever? Whatever transgender operation you're going to have. That won't happen really. 
unless cancer is involved. We have satan in cancer. And what is satan? It is atma karaka, your soul. Satan is dirty. Oh, Parvati is angry. So you see, and Saturn puts Drishti on the Aruda Lagna. So that's the catch. Saturn in the Saturn has gone to Cancer and is putting Drishti on the Aruda Lagna. You want to be a female. You want to be a beautiful female. So you become a beautiful female. So then uh, um, she became a beautiful female because she actually uh, sold the nightclub. Uh, she had a romantic relationship with David Bowie who helped her. And in 83, she sold the nightclub and had male to female surgery or whatever surgery that is. I mean, full female. She became a full female, full female body. And when did that happen? That happened in Mars Dasha, Venus Antar Dasha. Why Mars Dasha, Venus Antar Dasha? Mars is in Purva Falguni, which is a nakshatra of Venus. And Venus is in Shravana, which is a nakshatra of Moon. So how are they... So you see that <coughs> Venus is aspecting cancer all right. His dispositor is also gone there. I need cancer to be involved for the change, for a man to become a female. Right now I will do one. Not only that, she even got an asteroid named after her. Romy had 305660. Robeta Covell. Robert to Robeta. You can see this guy. You can see this and this. These two pictures. Not all changes happen because of Mercury. Sometimes it is because of a Graha Yuddha. Now you look at this. Where is the Aruda Lagna? The Aruda Lagna is in Libra. Okay. Who is the Lord of the Aruda? It's Venus. Okay. How is Venus? Venus is defeated. You see that? Defeated. So Venus is a defeated planet. So you don't like this Aruda. You feel very defeated in this Aruda. You feel very damaged in this Aruda. This masculine Aruda is damaging you. But there is a war over here. Whenever the Aruda Lord is in a war, you choose to join the Royal Air Force. See that? What did he do? Venus. Take Venus as the Lord of Aruda and going to war. Venus going to war. So you go join the army or you go join the Air Force. Right. He joined the Royal Air Force. In 18 November 1944 in Mangal Dasha, Mangal Dasha, he was captured by the Nazis. That is when the brain totally went. Okay. And in Mars Dasha, Mars Antar Dasha, the same Antar Dasha, he sort of came back because the Americans delivered him. Then Mars Dasha, Saturn Antar Dasha, he went into the depression. Why did he go into depression in Saturn Antar Dasha? Does Saturn, oh, Saturn has gone into the jungle of Parvati. In Cancer, you see, Saturn in Cancer, Saturn has gone into the jungle of Parvati. Any, I don't like malefics in cancer. If malefics go to cancer, you will, they will hit you on the head. So Saturn, you, you are in depression because any planet that goes there is going to become a female. So it goes into your head that I am a female. Why the hell am I living a male life? And, and to add to that, you have a debilitated Rahu in the Lagana, confused Rahu. So, so you see that the intelligence is also saying that this is not right. And so in moon Antar Dasha, see moon, the Lord of Cancer, the Lord of Cancer moon. He is the victorious. He is the one who has won. Moon has won. So you will become a female like the moon because men come from the sun and women come from the moon. Men come from the sun. Women come from the moon in Vedic astrology, not in Western. In Western, it is Mars and Venus. For us, it is sun and the moon. Because sun and the moon have two hands each and we all have two hands. So you can see other 
back in, so from 51 to some this was the first case huh? this was the first case of reassignment surgery in 51 in March dasha moon and antar dasha vaginoplasty and then a new birth certificate in the same antar dasha where he became roberta from robert he became roberta and the final surgery 20 years later in Saturn Dasha, Mercury Antar Dasha. Those things you can see, you can study. I think I'm over time. I think with this, I will say uh, time for me to say good my goodbyes. I just have one more slide, but that's okay. So now. Um, uh, Archana ji, are you there? Yes, sir. Thanks a lot for that very insightful class on Arudha. And it was, you know, it was very interesting that how it actually indicates the brand image of a, or perception of the person. Um, I think that was really interesting. And also all the case studies of the prominent personalities were very interesting. I'm sure our viewers and learned and enjoyed and appreciated it. Um, also, thank you for your kind words earlier about me. It means a lot. Thank you. Um, I I think we are out of time. Do we have time for the questions? I doubt it. We have run out of time. So good. Uh, people can then you can tell them to leave the questions in the. YouTube yeah. uh, from one place, and we can uh, can answer that. Unless we don't have any more time, I mean, the next yes, yes, will be speaking. I don't want to eat into that time. Thank you very much. Then I'll say goodbye. Thank now. you. Huh? Thank you again, sir, for the excellent masterclass. Uh, before we end the session, um, like uh, Sanjay Raji said, if you have any questions, please leave in the comment section, and uh, you know you will get your answers and. Also, I would like to take this opportunity to inform the audience that the next masterclass session is tomorrow. That is Sunday, the 24th of September. Um, it will be delivered by Srimati Pumila, and she'll be teaching us about Graha Drishti, the hidden influences we cannot ignore. See you again there. Also, if you'd like to stay informed about the masterclasses and similar sessions by the foundation, we encourage you to visit the website noted below in the session or join the Telegram channel. Dhaniwadaha. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much.